as our little planes came into land, we look out from horizon to horizon and see smoke, villages burning. Then emaciated people come running up with tears streaming down their cheeks, say, thank God you've come. And they say, come footing with us, how they say walking, and see what the enemy's done. So we walked, I went footing many times throughout all parts of South Sudan and the Nuba Mountains. And there's not time to take on those journeys tonight, but I want you to meet one person. And this lady really speaks for so many I spoke to on so many of those 30 visits. You can see there a young mother. You can see she's blind, with a blindness that could have been cured or treated, but of course it was a no-go area. And you could see the little one in the last stages of a death from starvation. And I'll never forget that young mum's words. And we heard this many times, it was policy. She said, you know, I could go to a government-held area and get food, clothes, medicine, but I know if I do, I will have to convert to Islam, because Islamic aid is conditional. She said, that I will never do. We're Christians, and I would rather live and die a Christian. A tough call to make for yourself, to sacrifice your child. I mean, I have a grandmother. I can hardly imagine the anguish of sacrificing a child for your faith. Well, that was the price of our faith in South Sudan and in many other places in that terrible war.